Well, people are just beginning to ask me, now my microphone's turned on. So people are just beginning to ask me what comes next when I retire. In fact, just last week, a new pastor, Cherie, wrote, I wonder how long you'll go in retirement without another goal or a what's next. She knows me too well. I have to tell you, law school keeps coming to my mind. Yeah, I know. I'm not concerned really about what comes next, and that's because I was given great advice when I first began ministry. I had asked an experienced colleague how I would know it was time to move on to the next appointment, and clearly I had been thinking about it might be time. Well, I was told three things. Always keep track of what I know. What do I know that I know? And then, what do I think I know that I need to practice next? And finally, what did I want to learn next? And if I couldn't find those three things in a current appointment, it was time to move on. If we can't find those three things in our current job, it's time to move on. What do we know? What do we think we know that we want to practice? And what do we want to learn next? Well, those are questions I have asked myself with every change in life. The night of the first Easter, the first followers were gathered in a locked room. They were hiding for fear of being arrested also, because if their leader had been arrested for blasphemy, well, surely they were next in line. And I believe they were also asking themselves, well, what do we do now? What comes next? How do we know what to do? Well, out of nowhere, Jesus appeared in the room. There was no doors being opened. No windows were open. Jesus just showed up. And we know Mary Magdalene, who saw the first risen Christ in John's Gospel, had told the other followers she had seen Jesus. And she told them Jesus said he was going to return to heaven. But I have real doubts as to whether any of the others believed that Jesus was going to suddenly show up in the middle of the room. They might have been surprised. So Jesus greeted them, and then, to prove that it was him, showed them his wounds in his hands and his feet. And once the followers were convinced they were in the presence of the risen Christ, Jesus told them exactly what was going to come next. Jesus first greeted them with peace, which i got to tell you, once Jesus tells me what's coming next, I need the reassurance of peace. But he greeted them with peace and then told them he was sending them just as God had sent him. And then Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them. Now, in John's Gospel, that moment on the evening of the resurrection was Pentecost. It was the moment when Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into his followers. Luke's author put Pentecost in the book of Acts, but John, who had no clue that Luke was writing the book of Acts, included the first Pentecost in his gospel. Is that all making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'll tell you how you're looking at me. <laughs> it must be the Sunday after Easter. So after Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into his followers, he told them that their job was to offer forgiveness to others, and that would be done in the form of, of baptism. When a person was baptized, their old life would be washed away along with their sins, and they would become a new person in Christ. John's way of saying that was to say that their sins were forgiven. Now, baptism was and still is up to each person. Those who were baptized accepted the forgiveness and new life that God offered. Those who turned away from Jesus we're turning away from accepting the forgiveness and new life that God offered to them. Now, that first Pentecost did not wait for 50 days to pass in Luke, like it did in Luke's Gospel, because Jesus knew what his followers knew. He was confident about what they knew, and he also knew what they needed to practice about what they knew. He, and he knew what they needed to learn next. So he put them to work right away. The first followers knew how to tell the story of Jesus. After all, they knew that intimately. What they needed to practice was putting what they learned from Jesus into action without him there. They needed to practice that. 
And what they needed to learn next was the how to keep the way of life Jesus taught them going into the future. So Jesus filled them with the Holy Spirit. Now we're gathered to worship on this first Sunday after Easter, Easter I could say Easter, during the season of Easter Tide. And the season of Easter Tide in the Christian Church is seven weeks long. Now the purpose of the season is to learn about Jesus, his way, his teachings, and his resurrection. It's also to discern our spiritual gifts, to remember our baptisms, and perhaps study the theology of the sacraments. At least that's what the United Methodist Church website says. <laughs> and once we've got all that reviewed, we're ready for the season of Pentecost to begin, where we put everything we learned during Easter time to use. But again, the first followers in John's Gospel didn't wait those 50 days for the season of Pentecost. Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them right then and right there, so they could put what they knew as well as what they thought they knew into practice and into use right then and right there, sharing the stories of Jesus while inviting to become others while inviting others to become followers, was to begin immediately. Now most years I'm really happy to spend the season of Easter time concentrating on consolidating and reinforcing our knowledge about Jesus. And I'm usually happy to invite all of us to think about what we know and what we know that we want to practice. But not this year. And that's because next Sunday we confirm five young adults into the life of the church. They've spent the last 14 weeks bolstering their knowledge about Jesus. And specifically, I've asked them to think about how what they believe makes an impact on their behavior and their thinking as followers of Jesus. Not just what they believe, but how what they believe makes an impact on how they live their everyday lives. And these young adults next Sunday will profess their faith and they will accept their place as followers of Jesus. They are ready for what comes next. They know what they know. They know what they think they need to practice they know. And, the rest, and like the rest of us, they all have something more to learn. So this year, I don't think we can wait those 50 days till Pentecost to get busy. My guess is many of us here are seasoned followers of Jesus. I didn't want to say we've been doing it a long time. We're just seasoned followers. We know what we know, and we know what we like to practice. And if we haven't yet thought about what we want to learn next about Jesus, the Bible, or our faith, well, it's not too late. Knowing what we want to learn next is a major step in how we grow our faith and how we grow our ability to live our faith. And as seasoned followers of Jesus, my guess is we're already putting what we know into practice. We just need another blast from the Holy Spirit, otherwise known as a Holy Spirit kick in the behind, to help us know what to do next. And this is the first Pentecost. I like it. <laughs> Preach, dog. <laughs> this is the first Pentecost when Jesus is ready to breathe the Holy Spirit into us. We don't have to wait 50 days for the Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait until I retire or until the new pastor arrives. I know, we're used to coasting this time, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pastor's considered a lame duck. <laughs> Does that description fit me in any way, shape, or form? No way. Yeah, so we don't have to wait. God has work for us to do in building the kingdom of heaven on earth. John's Jesus didn't wait for 50 days for the Pentecost in the book of Acts. Jesus, in John's gospel, gave the Holy Spirit to his followers that very night he was raised from death. So what do you know? What do you know that you want to practice? What do you want to learn next about how to live our faith? Because those are the questions that drive our faith forward. And the answers to those questions drive the ministry of the church forward. 
And if you have an answer for what you want to practice next or what you want to learn next, and the church is not already providing a way for you to do those things, talk to me. If you want to learn something and push the church to take a next step, talk to me. We don't have to wait. Because according to John's gospel, the first Pentecost has already arrived. Amen. Amen.